It's well known that the popularity of NASCAR has slowly declined since its peak in the 2000s. A combination of several factors contributed to this decline, but today I want to focus on the cars themselves. I'll detail all the mistakes NASCAR has made over the years in developing their cars. The way I see it, there's three main aspects that go into a good race car. First, safety, for obvious reasons. Second, entertainment value. Does it produce good racing on the track? Does it provide lots of overtaking and strategy opportunities? And third, engineering slash performance. Engineering is a pillar of practically all motorsport. Half the enjoyment comes from seeing what teams will improve their equipment. And besides, who wants to watch a slow, quiet race car? The Generation 4 car is the most recent to produce fatalities in NASCAR. Most infamously, it was Dale Earnhardt Sr. in the 2001 Daytona 500. However, I'd argue the Gen 4 car was safer than its track record appears. Fatalities like Dale Sr. could have been prevented with the use of the Hans device, which isn't the fault of the car. I mean, the car would continue at the top level of NASCAR for 6 years without major injuries, and lower levels like ARCA for 15 years without much issue. The safety issues that arose were less to do with the design of the car and more to do with the driver standards that rejected safer equipment. Despite the reasonable safety of the Gen 4 car, the car of tomorrow was undeniably a huge step forward from its predecessor. All it took to realize this was a single qualifying crash at Texas. Michael McDowell walked away from the crash with no injuries whatsoever. Though the wing made the cars prone to flips, its removal made for possibly the safest car to this day. The next generation of car was perhaps a step down in safety. Though it was still rare to see injuries, over the years the Gen 6 car and its Xfinity brother have dished out a few big injuries. Kyle Busch broke his leg at Daytona in 2015, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. was forced into an early retirement due to concussion issues in 2016. The main issue with the Generation 7 car is that it seems to be a big step backwards in safety. Just from looking at a crash, anyone could tell that the crumple zone on the car is much less pronounced. This means more of the shock of the impact is absorbed by the driver. NASCAR made this choice in an effort to make the cars more resilient, but it's not even achieved that. Sure, the body of the car is harder to bend, but the suspension parts break at even the slightest contact now. On top of this, we've already seen a champion of the sport, Kurt Busch, forced into retirement from crashes in the next-gen car. And if you think it's just the old guys having problems, young driver Alex Bowman suffered a concussion from contact which appeared to be light at the end of 2022. Over the past year, drivers like Denny Hamlin have openly criticized the Gen 7 platform, describing new headaches and soreness from crashes. This safety is especially of concern now that NASCAR is essentially six crash-riddled super speedway races per year with the reconfiguration of Atlanta. All this is to say NASCAR has definitely taken a step back in safety since introducing the car of tomorrow in 2007. When asked which generation of cars was their favorite, I'd bet most NASCAR fans would instantly say the generation 4 cars. Perhaps they're a little blinded by nostalgia, but I'd agree that this era was thrilling. The engine sounds were glorious. The racing simple, and the cars were beautiful. One of the biggest factors that made racing enjoyable during this era was the smaller reliance on aerodynamics. The current cars are big and bulky and have a lower power to weight ratio, whereas these Gen 4 cars scream down the track with raw power. As a result, they didn't have to deal with the dirty air that plagues much of modern motorsport, which removes grip as you approach a car and makes an overtake significantly more difficult. The Gen 5 cars took the first step away from the excitement of the Gen 4. With the introduction of the rear wing and the splitter, NASCAR started to experience some of the aforementioned aerodynamic problems. Despite this misstep, the Gen 5 produced some pretty awesome and unique racing especially the tandem drafting at Daytona and Talladega, which had some of the most entertaining finishes in the history of motorsport. Down low, way Good down run. comes Johnson. Good run. He's got you. room. They're three wide. Three by three run. to the line. Johnson. Maybe Jimmy Johnson. I believe he got him by an inch. Two 
one thousandths of a second he beat Boyer. Okay, a sixteenth of an inch. The Generation 6 cars missed the mark much harder than their predecessor. NASCAR doubled down on the splitter, spoiler, and bulky design, which resulted in poor racing, especially at the intermediate tracks. During this era, a few drivers would dominate entire seasons, winning 5-10 to 10 races each. The worst part about this car was that NASCAR couldn't decide what rules to use. They went from small spoilers to huge spoilers and back to small spoilers. They even completely cut the horsepower of the engine, from 750 to 550, for a couple years in order to artificially make the racing closer. In reality, all this did was make the issues with dirty air even more prevalent. Take a look at Kansas in 2020. Joey Logano was able to hold off a faster, surging Kevin Harvick for an entire 30 laps just by creating dirty air for him. That's not the type of racing NASCAR fans want to see, ever. Changes needed to be made. Through three and four for the final time. Joey Logano's gonna win again in 2020, this time, Kansas. So far, the next-gen cars have been a mixed bag on the track. The new platform has definitely improved the show at intermediate tracks, but almost everywhere else has been generally worse. The Gen 7 car dropped 80 horsepower down to 670, and it's proven to be ineffective at short tracks. Martinsville is one of the most beloved and entertaining tracks on the NASCAR schedule, and both of its races in 2022 were absolute snooze fests, apart from Ross Chastain's wall ride at the end of the second race. The most entertaining aspect of the next-gen car is its high level of competition. The 2022 season was tied for the most unique drivers to win a race in one season with 19. Parity and competition is certainly not the problem. The issue is that most of the problems plaguing the Gen 7 car are engineering related. It isn't NASCAR or motorsport without some clever tricks that are borderline cheating. The Gen 4 was a perfect personification of this idea. Teams did anything to get an edge, which led to the interesting Twisted Sister era of cars, which were bizarrely asymmetrical. These little engineering differences added layers to the intrigue of racing. All this is not to mention the insane speeds these little cars could pull. The Generation 5 car was much less malleable than the Gen 4. Its boxy design was much more set in stone than the Gen 4, and as I mentioned earlier, the lower power to weight ratio made the car perform worse. One major drawback in its design was that the new splitter would dig into the dirt and destroy the car, sometimes causing it to fly into the air. This safety issue would never be fixed, continuing for over a decade until Charlotte Motor Speedway changed their grass out for turf, and then eventually the Gen 7 car removed the splitter altogether. The Gen 6 practically ended all forms of bodywork engineering by introducing laser inspection. Instead of working within the templates that NASCAR would use to inspect your car on pit road, teams would have to precisely adhere to the laser inspection rules starting in 2013. Despite this, underlying parts would still be completely up to the teams to produce, and still provided a good amount of interest, especially in the reliability of the car. A race could be made all the more entertaining by a team who has pushed it too far and as a result their engine blows up into a ball of smoke. The changes in the next gen car prevented this from happening though. The generation 7 car would have all parts provided by NASCAR in an effort to tighten up the racing and make the sport cheaper, which was successful admittedly. Unfortunately in doing this, a certain spirit of racing is lost. The only thing that teams are allowed to tweak now is their setup. Any change to a part, no matter how small, is subject to huge fines, suspensions, and penalties from NASCAR. It wouldn't be as big of an issue if NASCAR provided good parts, but unfortunately the opposite has been the case. As I mentioned earlier, the suspension on these cars breaks like a twig at the slightest contact. Additionally, the low profile tires that came with the new regulation completely blow out after any spin, and have no inner liner beneath them. Because of this, Drivers often get stuck and go down multiple laps after a simple spin. And let's not forget to mention Kyle Busch's engine blowing up under caution at Darlington. Adam's gonna say, is there smoke yeah. coming out of the 18? Coming out of the pipes. The 18 is blowing up. What is going on? It is unbelievable the number of playoff drivers that have had problems tonight. These cars were marketed as stronger, tougher cars, 
but so far the only thing they have been stronger at is failing. Overall, it's clear that NASCAR has downgraded in the quality of their cars over the past 20 years. The modern cars are more dangerous than they were a decade ago, constantly take lateral steps in entertainment value, and have the worst engineering NASCAR has ever seen. Despite all of the issues I have with the Gen 7 car, I do believe it can be taken to the right places. NASCAR has already taken a step forward by increasing the rear crumple zone for 2023. If NASCAR continues to take these correct steps to fix its problems, I believe the Gen 7 can be superior to the Gen 6 and even the Gen 5 cars. Then again, it is NASCAR we're talking about, so I guess all we can do is hope. Thanks for watching, everybody.